Hey there, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Charlotte with Colorful Teaching for You. And today we're going to look at five simple back to school organization hacks for your classroom. So I know when it's when you've got 20 to 30 plus students, it is really difficult to keep an organized class. Things are just plain chaotic. So I'm not going to give you a million different um, different hacks because I've seen some of those, those posts and there's like 100 hacks for, te for new teachers. That's way too much, right? You've got enough going on. So I'm going to give you five simple hacks that you can use right now and it'll help you keep your classroom nice, fun, easy, simple. That's the key word, simple. So let's get right to it. The first step, my friend, is organization bins. I like to have three different organization bins. One is for hand in. I call it hand in. That's where students hand in their assignments when they're done. It really helps me because then I don't have a million, well not a million, but you know all of my students coming to me first thing in the morning to hand in assignments and I'm not tracking every single one of them that early. So the kids just bring their assignments in and they put it into their bin and I collect it later to mark. Okay. The second one is an extra work section. So if you are wanting to differentiate some of your work for those who have who are early finishers or if those um, who are either struggling with the task or it's too easy, I like to put that in an extra um, in the extra work bin so that kids can go and take out um, a sheet as they need it. Then my third bin is notices. Here, what I like to do is I keep all the notices that I need to hand out so when my kids are writing in their planner after they're done, they either go collect it or if I don't want them to collect it, I take it out from that notices bin and I hand it out to them. This way, I don't ever forget that I need to hand out notices because I see that bin and I make it a habit to go into that bin. Okay, so that's my first one, my organization bins. The second tip is reading books. So what I like to do here is I like to organize it by um, type or by genre. So for young kids, for example, I might organize a um, you know the Clifford books just by Clifford. That's the type. Um, for older kids, I might go for genre like uh, historical fiction, for example. Now the key thing to do this to do here is not to just organize it and leave it, but you want to pre-teach your children how do you put it back, right? Because they can they'll take it and then they'll start to put it in different bins, and that's not what we want. So we teach them historical fiction books go into this bin that you've taken out, and we practice it, and then I kind of release and uh, as they, as we go along, okay? So that's step two. Step three is simple boards. So here, what I like to do is, if if you're running out of time, you don't need to go and have these big, beautiful boards. I know I said the word beautiful, but you don't need it. I've seen some classrooms where it's just, there's just so much going on, there's so much color, that it's just, you don't know where to look. And kids, according to evidence, don't learn well when there's just too much color bombarding them. In fact, they learn better in neutral environments. So what I like to do here is, in my classroom, I have a few boards that actually have a colored background with a beautiful border and you know posters and things up. My entrance board, I do take some time to actually decorate it, but there are, there are um, boards where I like to leave it just neutral. I, I do put in the effort by putting a border there, and for some of them, I will have a nice white background, but if I don't have the time, I don't need a white background. I've already got the beige background. I use my beige background. That's okay. In fact, for my, um, I'm for um, some of my boards. I like that neutral background. I like that uh, beige color, and I leave it in that way because it brings attention. It makes us. It calms ourselves down. And when we need a calming activity, that's where we go. Okay. So don't don't feel like you need to compete or you need to have too much color. Sometimes less is more. Okay. So go for simple. The fourth one is file folders. This is to me incredibly important. I find it so um, so interesting that a lot of us are now looking at putting everything on um, on the computer. Everything is digitized, and that's great because you want to have a backup. But what happens if your computer in that moment decides it's not going to work? If you've put everything on Google Drive, what happens if the internet doesn't work at that time? Because I've had times where the internet does not work. What if? the printer is not working because we've also had that issue happen. <laughs> and then if my kids are missing this, missing um, assignments or if I suddenly get a new child in and I don't have um, something prepped for them, then I'm now screwed. 
really I'm not I am right so what I like to do is have a hard copy of everything and I put it in file folders and I actually organize it by subject and by unit so unit and by unit and also by term so term one unit might be water and in that um, thing I might have like the different lesson different activities for each lesson so that if I need to I just grab it and either I go or they go to the printer to the photocopier and get it done yeah and the fifth one is expectation charts this is really important we'll talk more about expectations next week but right now expectation chart is where when you set up expectations with your classroom I want you to actually um, take that chart and post it where your kids can see if you've got access to a laminating a laminator then I highly recommend laminating them before you post it up in a visible spot so your kids can see it because those if you laminate it, it's actually going to last you a lot longer for a few years in, because you know, you're always going to have those kids that are rubbing their backs against something or they write accidentally on it. So just to be on the safe side, that's going to help, uh, help you. But take those expectation charts, put it where they can see it. Okay, so let's recap quickly. We've talked about the importance of actually um, of you know these five hacks why we're only doing five and not you know a million of them <laughs> and the five hacks that we talked about is organization bins we've got three different types um, hand in extra work and notices we looked at number two reading um, how to organize reading books we've looked at simple boards right you don't need too much color we've looked at file folders how to organize our file folders and we've looked at expectation charts how to organize and where to put it all right so in the meantime, if you have any questions, send me a private message. And if you are looking for um, free resources for your classroom, I highly recommend checking out my free resource library at www.colorfulteachingforyou.com forward slash freebies. And in the meantime, please remember to create, experience, and teach from the heart. I, I will see you again, same place, same time next week. Take care, my friends. Bye.